Today we're going to talk about how lighting impacts our civic realm, our public spaces, and what is our civic intent. It's a new field of utilizing light to create an evocative space for the public realm. What we are saying is that light doesn't have to have a premium, especially for public spaces, where people at large are enjoying the space, where the footfalls are not for one family, not just for one family and their friends, which is what you would have in a big residential project, but for thousands, hundreds of thousands of people or millions of people. That motivates us because then the impact of good light can be felt by everyone. In an examination of light through history, what you would find is that light has been unfettered since inception. You know, we just depended on the sun and the moon and the candles and the fire and so on. Then when we went to the age of electric light, right? I don't call it artificial because it's just electric light. It's not artificial, it's still light. It just comes out of electricity. When we came to that age of electric light, people started putting a premium on good lighting. Then the lighting manufacturers got involved, other vested interests got involved, and suddenly public spaces in many parts of the world did not or could not have great lighting. So what we are saying is that lighting for public spaces should be given premium importance because it impacts millions of people. On a trip to Haiti um, after the earthquake, we've been doing work in Haiti from before the earthquake. What I found was very interesting, and you know, then that impacted the work that we did after that, is that the public spaces, especially opposite the presidential palace, what used to be a public park was now a place uh, where people had to live uh, because they, their homes had been destroyed. But I asked a question of my local host. I said, what was this park used for? Because there were pathways everywhere. So it wasn't like, you know, what we would see in the United States. There's a big baseball uh, field in the middle or a soccer field or a football field. And then you'll have beaches around. Uh, this was just pathways and lights. And my host said, well, this is where the kids came to study at night before the earthquake, you know, when it was a park. And I found a certain beauty to, to this example in that light was being used freely to educate the masses. You know, the city provided it. it became a turning point in my analysis of how I want to do public spaces, you know. But understanding the significance, you can't take it lightly. It's not somebody's backyard or somebody's um, little estate up in some gated community where, you know, only a few people can get entry. This is for everyone. Then you take this civic intent onto master planning for cities, for towns, for big areas. And we feel that if you really wish to give the population access to all these spaces, more than just sunrise to sunset, then light clearly plays, you know, electric light clearly plays a very important role. I mean, that's kind of Captain Obvious stuff. But what for us was important is that there is one which has just put street lights and say, here, I gave you Lux Levels and Foot Candles, right? And then there's another where you use light as a catalyst for community, where people are interacting with each other because, are interacting with each other better because of the lighting, that there is safety and security for all parts of the population. You know, children, women, older people, everybody feels safe and secure because of the lighting that we have created, which is not about just putting street lights and foot candles and lux levels. It's really about an analysis of where the footfalls are, where the photonic energy should go, and then creating a master plan that ties everything together so that the city or the town can actually maintain it over the life of the project without making it boring and one street light everywhere 
you know, you can have different scales to the light. We have used that successfully. We did a project in Mexico, um, which is a big public uh, park. And it worked very well to use the different scales, very well appreciated. Again, not in the book because we have to take, we had to take many of our projects out. So on that note, light is just not a light bulb or your reading lamp or your overhead, you know, down lights or office lighting, etc. There is so much more that we can do with that in the civic realm, not just facade lighting. You know, everybody wants to light facades. I referred to this in round one where, you know, it's the building envy, you know, my building is better lit than yours, you know, that helps in some ways. There's some civic pride and tourism and uh, safety security issues, but it's not, it's an applique of light. It's not creating a fabric of light, you know, that people can wade through, people can immerse themselves in, utilize that to know their neighbors better, engage in conversations. So great amount of power that we can unleash, almost unleash, and I love that word, unleash power of light onto the masses if we do it right. On that note, thank you for listening. Until the next time.